All right, welcome everybody to another session of Bison on the Front Line. Uh, this is an opportunity for us at Bucknell to reach out to our former student athletes who are serving on the front lines and putting themselves in harm's way each and every day for the betterment of, of the rest of us. And we really appreciate Mark Kramerchuk from the class of 2016 joining us today. Mark played soccer at Bucknell. And Mark, first of all, uh, how are you doing in terms of your health and safety? And are you staying well? Um, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, the healthiest I can be. Um, outside of work, obviously, in the hospital, it's, you're always trying to be as safe and healthy as possible. At home, yeah, trying to do what I can, taking what, you know, all the essential vitamins and um, stuff like that. But holding up, holding in there for sure. And for those viewing at home, um, let everybody know exactly where you do work and what your responsibilities are there. Okay, so yes, I um, am working at NYU Lingo Medical Center um, in Manhattan, um, and I've been here almost a year, um, and I'm currently working on a COVID-only floor, um, taking care of patients who are you know, positive with the virus um, and managing their oxygenation levels primarily. So a little less than a year, and you are right in the middle of it. Yeah, this is something I definitely did not, you know, really, I mean, you always have this thought in the back of your head that you could, you know, something like this could happen potentially, but you never really see it playing out. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, a year in and this is something that's, you know, very critical and I, I would have never really thought this, you know, to happen. So Mark, how are um, the hospitals that uh, are in New York City taking measures to help keep you safe as somebody who's right on the front lines? Right. I mean, we're, you know, the, we're very similar to what, you know, everyone else is at home, right? We're always at risk of being potentially infected. Um, the only difference is that here in the hospital, um, we do have a little bit more protection, right? We have gowns, we have masks, uh, both surgical and those N95 masks that you hear about in the news. Um, we have face shields. Um, and that's what I've heard throughout the hospitals in New York City. I have some good friends who work at different, in, you know, hospitals, institutions here in the city. Um, and, you know, where we're, we have protection, we have those PPE, the personal protective um, equipment. Um, and that's basically how we're primarily protecting ourselves, right? We're washing our hands, stuff that, you know, everyone at home is encouraged to do. Um, and the other thing that we have here in the hospital, we have these negative pressure rooms, which allow all the virus to stay inside the room um, and not kind of be spread throughout the hospital. So that's probably the key difference and obviously the gear that we have um, here provided in the hospital. And um, a lot of the other institutions across New York City have this as well. So when the pandemic began, how did, uh, how did you first see that this was going to be something really, really serious? Was there all of a sudden a huge jump in the number of patients you had at the hospital? Or what was the um, for you? Well, it wasn't really a, uh, I mean, we've heard, of, you know, it was on the news. Um, and then it was, you know, at that point, I was still on days working, day shift. And um, we were hearing these rumors and kind of you could see that the hospital was just starting to convert itself into COVID floors, COVID patients, um, accepted COVID patients. And by that, rooms were started to be, you know, blocked off and reserved, right? Because on the unit, we can have some patients that are COVID or, you know, we're trying to see if they have this virus and other patients are your normal patients. Um, and our floor before this occurred on the floor that I work on was a surgical floor, um, a floor that dealt with patients who had surgery and would come back to our floor. Um, so it kind of, we saw things starting to happen when say half of our unit was blocked off. Um, you know, we had 15 or 16 beds blocked off with no patients and the other side had patients that was still surgical. So you kind of saw it starting to pick up. Um, and then all of a sudden, well, I remember one shift that the rooms were just, you know, being filled with patients literally as minutes went by you know, you had someone else come up and, it, you know, by an hour, you might have had already five, 10 patients. Um, and at that point, I really realized that this is starting to pick up. Um, and I will never forget this. It was, you know, it was 
oh, I went over to help somebody and they said, I need help um, with somebody. And I threw on all the protective gear and just, you know, kind of jumped in there basically. And that's kind of when it really hit. Um, and it was from that point on, you had patients coming in at a very high rate. Um, you, you know, once a room was empty and clean, within minutes, there was someone else there already. Um, and that's when you kind of, I got the sense that things, this pandemic was really occurring and it, it re for sure is for real. So to go along with that, how do you and your colleagues um, keep a positive attitude every day, knowing that, you know, each morning you wake up or each afternoon that you prepare to go in for a night shift, you may be going right. and seeing things that are not not so great and and some outcomes right. that aren't so great. How do you stay positive and, and keep each other going? Right. Um, so I think the main thing is, is obviously people that we work with um, having each other. Um, it, you know, we build off of each other, um, like with any sports team. I and mean, we're really, you know, really um close kind of family here and we're really supportive of each other and you know we have staff coming from all over the hospital we have people coming from different states colorado massachusetts and they're all in it together we're all in it for the one purpose of helping people out and i think building and working off each other is one way that we kind of keep positivity um because like you said waking up every morning or before i come into the hospital it is hard um, because one you do know that you may have a really hard shift you may know that patients may pass away or may become sick um, but then you also have this other aspect that you don't know what may happen um, you don't know what may occur so you kind of you're really anxious and you know you don't know what could happen in the blink of an eye you know there's some of these patients kind of you know escalates their situation really quickly um, but like I said working with the other nurses with the other staff um, really brings some positivity with to each other <clears throat> and also what I've noticed is a lot of these patients you do have patients who are sick but do you do have a lot of patients who are getting better who say are off the ventilator and they're breathing on their own completely um, so that's something that definitely drives us to come here makes us more positive in our outlook and how things are progressing and going on um, in the world or country right now as well. So in addition to the support you show each other as colleagues, um, what kind of support are you seeing around the city from New Yorkers for the, the medical workers? Right. Um, I mean, there's tons of, first of all, I mean, I'm sure you, you've heard and everyone who's watching has heard about the, the claps that we have at 7 p.m. and um, different things that we have. I mean, I, unfortunately, my shift starts at eight, so I'm driving at seven. Um, so I haven't heard the claps yet in the city, um, but my neighbors actually do a clap sometimes once or twice a week when I go into work, which is very nice of them. Um, you know, we do have a lot of signs. There's across the street, there's, you know, people posting signs in their windows. Um, there's drawings on the sidewalk in front of our main entrance um, and then we have a lot of just like restaurants and food distributors providing food meals coffee cake donuts you know meal all sorts of things so a lot of people are very supportive of this and um, helping us get through this so the final question i have for you and again mark i really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of out of your shift to talk to us today um, Harking back to your time as a student athlete at Bucknell, and what might you have taken from those experiences there that are helping you right now uh, get through this crisis? Right. I mean, when I first started playing, um, it was an adjustment, um, something I wasn't used to, something that I thought I might have been prepared for. Um, and that is, you know, playing a college a D1 sport as well as being part of a, a school with such a great academic um, record. Um, and it was something that was challenging, that was hard. And, um, you know, the first few months was very difficult. I remember thinking to myself, could I really get through this? It's a lot of time consuming playing soccer and trying to get your academics in. 
Um, and it kind of built this character in me. And I've learned, you know, from the coaches on the team. And, um, you know, you could get through it if you really strive to do or strive, you know, to accomplish what you want. Um, and that was something that I kind of, kind of ingrained in me uh, as, you know, throughout my four years and something that's really helped me here. Um, I don't think everything is ever going to be easy but if you set your mind to something um and work through it with those around you as well um you could get through anything so that was something that i really ex you know i experienced in college at bucknell um and something that i've carried over and it's definitely helping me get through this challenging and rough time and you know my fresh career of being a nurse well i can tell you personally obviously i want to thank you for everything you're doing uh, and I'm sure everybody out there wants to thank the, the health uh, workers and the frontline people for what you guys are doing. And, and, you know, it goes a long, long way and you're saving thousands of people and assisting so many people. And we all really appreciate it. And um, please stay healthy and stay bison strong. And again, thank you for joining us today. No problem, Todd. Thank you for having me.